So once again, we're turning to the book of Luke, the gospel of the nobodies. Today we'll look at chapter 10, verses 25 through 29. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? <coughs> what is written in the law, Jesus replied. How do you read it? The expert in the law answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? The word of God for all of us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh God, we ask you at this moment that you just open our hearts and open our minds to hear your words. Father God, let us hear your words. Help us to understand them. And oh God, give us the strength to live them out. Amen. <clears throat> so we are halfway through with our Lenten journey, which means we are half, halfway through reading the book of Luke. We're all still reading the book of Luke, right? Okay, I see some heads shaking. Good. Now, in your reading, you may have noticed that um, there's this growing tension between Jesus and the religious leaders. Jesus was offering people a, a new way of seeing the scriptures. He was opening their eyes to a new way of doing life. And the religious leaders, they began to notice that Jesus was becoming more popular than they were. They started to notice that Jesus was attracting these large crowds and, well, they were not. So they began to sniff around to see, to see what this young rabbi from Nazareth was all about. And the first thing they noticed was that Jesus' definition of righteousness was different than theirs. That when Jesus talked about who was in the kingdom of God and who was out, that was different. Jesus' ins and outs was different than theirs. We read this. You, you've been reading this in, in the book of Luke. We saw in chapter 5 that Jesus, he called a tax collector to be his disciple. The kingdom of God wasn't for tax collectors, according to the religious leaders. And then Jesus went and he had dinner with tax collectors and sinners. I mean, they couldn't understand why Jesus would share a meal with such unrighteous people. Chapter 6, we read how Jesus healed a man on the Sabbath. The religious leaders thought that well, Jesus had no respect for the laws, for their laws. How dare him? How could he put a person's needs above their laws? In chapter 7, well, this is when the religious leaders really got confused because of the story where Jesus, Jesus healed a servant of a Roman soldier. This Roman soldier came to Jesus and asked Jesus to heal his servant. Now, now the Romans, they were enemies. 
If you were a Jew, the, the Roman soldier was your enemy. And here these religious leaders, they couldn't understand that Jesus went and helped his enemy. Also, that was the chapter we talked about last week when Jesus, he uh, went to dinner at the Pharisee's house. And as they were eating dinner, this very sinful woman came in and washed Jesus' feet. And then Jesus proceeded to say that this woman, this sinful woman and, and her actions, this woman was more pleasing to God than his host. Simon the Pharisees. So it sure looks like that Jesus was saying that everyone is in who wants to be in. Everyone is in who desires to be in. Everyone is in who chooses to be in. Now the religious leaders... They found it very difficult to pin down Jesus' theology. So what do you do? You call in an expert. So he called in an expert of the law. And, and this expert, he came ready. He had, a, he had a question that would test Jesus. He had a question that would, he thought, make Jesus narrow down his definition of righteousness. So this expert of the law, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What must I do to live into God's kingdom? Well, Jesus, Jesus knew this was a test. He knew he was an expert of the law, so Jesus said, uh, well, what is written? What is written in the law, and, and how do you read it? And this lawyer, he had some confidence. He knew he knew the answer, so he boldly said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And now this lawyer, he was, he was wise because he also added, and love your neighbor as yourself. <clears throat> and Jesus, he looked at this expert and he said, you nailed it. You know your stuff. You know your scripture. So go and do it. Go and love the Lord your God with all you got and love your neighbor as yourself. And if you do this, you will experience the presence of God. If you do this, you will experience the fullness of God's grace and love. You see, the Pharisees, these religious leaders, they knew their scripture here, but they just couldn't get it here. They knew it here, but they just couldn't get it here. They, they knew all the scriptures. They knew how to interpret the law. They just didn't know how to live out the heart of God. And Jesus, oh, how Jesus tried to lead them in a way that would bridge their minds and their hearts together. So this expert, now notice this, this expert really, he, he answered his own question. Jesus has not given an answer yet. And so this expert of the law, he had to, he had to ask another question. He wasn't satisfied with with this one question that he already answered. So he had to ask a, another question. You see, what he wanted Jesus to do, really, was he wanted Jesus to confirm his righteousness. So he asked the question, well, who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? 
Now, Jesus, in response to this highly technical question, Jesus, he told a very human story. He told a very relatable story. Jesus told a parable. And a parable takes everyday things or experiences and makes a spiritual point. And the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel of Luke has the greatest number of parables. In fact, a lot of the parables you find in Luke, you will not find in the other Gospels. Because these are the parables that sometimes they do a contrast between the nobodies and the somebodies. Or these parables showed how God lifts up the lowly. Luke included so many parables because he wanted his readers to read these stories and ask themselves two questions. He wanted us to read these parables, these stories, and ask ourselves, who are we in this story? Who are we? And the second question he, he wanted us to ask ourselves is, what does Jesus want me to think or do in response to this story? Who am I in this story? And Jesus told this story, so what does he want me to think or do in response? So in order to answer this Experts question, Jesus, he told the story of the Good Samaritan. He told the story of this man that was robbed and left half dead laying on the side of the road. He tells about how a priest and a Levi, they were walking down the road, saw the guy laying in a ditch, and he kept on going. This priest and the Levi, they were respectable people. They were, they were the followers of the law. They were the somebodies. But these somebodies scooted to the other side of the road and kept on going. And then Jesus, Jesus says, then comes along a Samaritan. A Samaritan. Now, we have heard the word good and Samaritan together so many times that we think us all Samaritans are good. But in Jesus' day, that was the last thing you wanted to be. You didn't want to be a Samaritan. The Jews and the Samaritan, they were always in conflict with each other. In fact, I would go as as far to say that the Jews looked at the Samaritan as their enemy. But in this story that Jesus told, this Samaritan, this nobody, this enemy of the Jew, well, in, in Jesus' story, this Samaritan becomes the hero. He becomes the hero because he was willing to open his eyes, open his heart, open his hands, open his schedule, and open his wallet. The story of the Good Samaritan is a story about extravagant love and grace that was shown by the most unlikely person. So after Jesus finished this story of the Good Samaritan, this story of extravagant love and grace, he looked at this expert in the law and he said, Okay, who was the neighbor to the man laying in the ditch? And now this, it's in this scripture that you really start to understand the hate between the Jews and the Samaritan because this this expert in the law, he could not bring himself to say that it was the Samaritan who was righteous. He just couldn't make himself say that the Samaritan was the one who did the right thing, the one that was pleasing to God. 
So that's why he answers the question by saying, the one who showed mercy. And so Jesus said, go, go and do likewise. But did you see what Jesus did in this story? Do you see it? Jesus redefined neighbor. Jesus defined neighbor as someone who is in need. That a neighbor is not based on kinship or on location. He defined a, need, a neighbor based on need. He, he provided a definition of love that was so big it blew the religious leaders' minds. You see, this expert, he came, he came to Jesus that day pretty sure of his own righteousness. But then Jesus redefined righteousness. Here's the thing. Jesus, Jesus really tells us that we only need to love two kinds of people. That's it. We only need to love two kinds of people. Jesus tells us over and over again that we need to love our neighbors and love our enemies. That's it, folks. That's all we need to love is our neighbors and our enemies. The religious leaders, they knew the scripture here, but they couldn't quite get it here. So let us ask ourselves, who are we in this story? Who are we? I think I can be I can be just like that lawyer. I know the answer. I know the scripture. I know what the scripture tells me to do. I just don't always want to do it. I guess you can say, uh, I know it here, but I can't quite get it here, and I definitely can't get it here. It takes work. It takes work to live out the word of God. But Jesus is there leading and guiding us and, and helping us to live out God's word. He's given us the gift of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit in us and with us to guide us, to whisper into our lives. We just have to be willing to open our eyes and open our ears. As you read Luke, have you seen how hard Jesus tried to help the Pharisees understand God's heart. But the Pharisees, they opposed him furiously. He was showing them a different way of thinking and doing, and they just could not leave their old ways. So instead, they just followed Jesus around taking notes ready to condemn him. So what is this parable? What is this story that Jesus told us? What is, what is he telling us? What does he want us to think or do in response? This story tells us about love. This story tells us that love jumps over what is fair and tells us to give what is needed. This story tells us that sometimes love will cost us. This story tells us that sometimes love will take up a lot of our time. This story tells us that love does not stop and ask if this person is worthy. 
This story simply tells us that love, <coughs> love sees a need and it gives. This story also redefines neighbor. This story tells us that sometimes a, a neighbor, well, they're not going to think like us, look like us, or live like us. The story tells us a neighbor is someone who just needs us. Someone who needs a kind word. Someone who needs us to walk beside them and support them. Someone who needs to know that they are a somebody to us and to God. But I'm going to tell you, loving like Jesus is not easy. It is not easy. Loving like Jesus takes a lot of work to get his teachings from here to here to here. It takes work. I'm going to tell you, being a follower of Jesus, it isn't for sissies. Because it takes work. This story of the Good Samaritan, it points, it points us to the very love that Jesus will show us on the cross. That love that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So as we're getting closer to Holy Week and as we are getting closer to standing at the foot of the cross, let us reflect on Jesus' kind of love. Jesus calls us to accept his love and to share his love to accept it and to share it. Let us stand and in response to God's word,